Good morning and welcome to the 10th Sunday after Trinity. This is a morning prayer service with a sermon uh, attached to it. Uh, this uh, morning's service is going to go this way. If we're back to Trinity season, we haven't left Trinity season, but we did um, do a, a Saints Day a couple weeks ago. But we are on a regular Trinity Sunday this week. The 10th Sunday after Trinity propers are found on page 203 of your Book of Common Prayer. Page 203, that's where you're going to find the collect for the day, the prayer, the epistle, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and then over on page 204, that's where you're going to find the gospel. So those three uh, items are found there at page 203 and 204. If you turn over this morning, Psalm is Psalm 145, Psalm 145. So that's found on page 520, and that takes up a, a good almost page and a half. So Nice lengthy psalm this morning, page uh, 520, Psalm 145. Again, our gospel and epistle begin on page 203, and our morning prayer service itself uh, begins on page 3. We're starting on page 3 with some opening sentences. We're going to turn right over to page 6 and go into our confession of sin. So with all those items in place, I hope you have your prayer books marked. We'll get started. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and infinitely believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. For he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
Psalm 145. I will magnify thee, O God, my King, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee and praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and marvelous, worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works, so that men shall speak of the might of thy marvelous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be showed, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. They show the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. That thy power, thy glory, and mightiness of thy kingdom might be known unto men. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all ages. The Lord upholdeth all such as fall, and lifteth up all those that are down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, O Lord, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and fillest all things living with plenteousness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and let all flesh give thanks unto his holy name forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The epistles written in the twelfth chapter of the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye are led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to the one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Here endeth the epistle. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. 
Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 41st verse. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Collect for Trinity 10, like many, is a very, very old prayer in the church. It comes to us from a collection of liturgies dated at least as far back as the 8th century. This prayer sets out two parallel relationships, the mercy of God with our humility and the will of God with our own desires. Wrapped up in this short collect is the hearty desire that our will would be the same as God's so that we may benefit from his mercy and graceful provision. Listen again to the first line. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants. We don't have to look very hard to see the biblical precedence for the belief that God is merciful and listens to those who humbly love and serve him. The psalm appointed for the daily office this morning is Psalm 145. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, yea, all such as call upon him faithfully. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will help them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but scattereth abroad all the ungodly. God rescuing the destitute but faithful servant is a common theme in Psalms, but also narratively throughout the stories of biblical history. Think of all the times God has chosen people the fallen world would neglect or ignore. Youngest sons, a stammering runaway, a young shepherd, clueless fishermen, and the son of a carpenter. The Roman philosopher Celsus, when criticizing the early Christian church, called it a servile religion made up only of foolish and low individuals, and slaves, and women, and children. Though there were converts from all walks of life, we shouldn't be surprised the church began with the very meek whom Jesus promised would inherit the earth. You'll remember that when Elizabeth wondered aloud in Luke 1 why God chose to bless her and Mary of all people, our mother Mary answered that this is, of course, how God always chooses to work. She summarizes it beautifully in her song that we recite every evening, the Magnificat. He has looked on the lowliness of his servant. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the humble and meek. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. God has always been in the business of vindicating the lowly, never more than in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The character of God is unchanging, Old Testament or new, God is and has always been merciful to the humble. 
The application of this wonderful truth comes in the next line of our prayer. The second part of the colic this morning is, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please thee. In this ancient prayer, we are asking God to purify the very prayers we and all who belong to God are offering him. These are prayers we have already stated we believe he will hear because we are humble before God. And if so, then we can have faith that God will answer them. Don't confuse these though. Being humble is not the surefire strategy we employ because we want to get our prayers answered like children behaving for Santa Claus. No, the humble spirit open to the will of God is the purpose of prayer, not the other way around. A truly contrite heart seeking first his kingdom is the goal. Time and time again, God has chosen to act through the humble faith of his people. The next time you are asked why prayer works, if God already knows what he's going to do, Remind your friend that prayer works because if God is God, then he not only decides what comes to pass, but also the means by which and the way in which it comes to pass. And believe it or not, God has chosen, as he always has, for that to be in no insignificant way through faith, the faith of his kingdom of priests, us praying on our knees and trusting in his mercy. We are reclaiming our Eden vocation to be faithful stewards ruling with him, allowing the Holy Spirit dwelling with us to be his presence in every broken and dark part of the world. In our gospel lesson this morning, St. Luke has placed Jesus' lament over Jerusalem and its destined destruction just before his cleansing of the temple. Clearly, Luke saw a connection between the coming judgment on Jerusalem and what Jesus found at the temple. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Roman money had to be exchanged for Jewish money in order to be used in the temple. And the money changers would make a profit from this, likely charging a currency exchange fee. An unfair profit was also made from the animals sold within the temple. All this profit was made from the worship of God. But it wasn't just a religious failure. Worse than that, it was a failure of Israel's vocation. Jesus is quoting from Isaiah 56, their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. And if you look at the header for that chapter in Isaiah in your Bibles, you should see salvation for foreigners or for others. That means the Gentiles. But here Jesus is witnessing these dishonest dealings taking place where? in the temple court of Gentiles. That is, in the very place where Gentiles were supposed to go to worship God and be reconciled. The temple of God, the place for God's intended presence on earth, the means of offering worship to God, this amazing gift, all of it was never for the Israelites' sake alone. God's gifts are never for our own profit or prestige But instead, using Paul's words this morning against the Corinthians, God's gifts are to profit with all. Or for those who don't speak King James English, they are for the common good. The humility that God desired was supposed to come from understanding Israel's role in his kingdom, Israel's vocation, now our vocation too. We are stewards of God's presence and message for the world, his word. Jesus is reminding those in Jerusalem that this holy house of prayer was always supposed to have been for all peoples. Why? Because as I've said, God's ardent desire is that his reconciliation and redemption of the world would come through a faithful and prayerful people. Psalm 1 type of people who are nourished with God's word and bear fruit. A humble remnant who desire with contrite hearts for his will to be done. 
as people called to be that Christ-like remnant. We must strive to keep contrite hearts through prayer and meditation on God's word. Fortunately, in our tradition, we share a life of common prayer in reciting the daily office, in our own personal devotions and spiritual practices, but most especially in the culmination of our prayer lives, the Eucharist, when at the Lord's table, we place all our joys and worries, every travail and heavy burden we carry for ourselves and those around us, we place them all upon the person of Jesus, whom Paul writes, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. It is in this humility, his humility, we offer our prayers by faith. This was the ultimate servant-like humility when Jesus became the Israel Jerusalem had failed to be. When for all nations, he prayed, thy will be done and meant it, even knowing what that would mean. Brothers and sisters, I invite you the next time you are at Mass, to listen carefully to the priest's words of consecration at the altar. Note how even our praises are offered up in light of Jesus. It is not just the bread and wine which are being set apart. Our prayers, along with our bodies and souls, are also offered to God humbly in response to the greater offering of Jesus. And after that, in the next line of our liturgy, the priest will say, and now, now that we have remembered what Jesus has done, now we are bold to say the Lord's Prayer. We pray in the very words of Jesus. We pray with contrite hearts for God's will to be done. And Jesus is the assurance we have that God hears us. We are bold, not because we've been humble enough, to please God and deserve his mercy, but because we are in Christ and now benefit from all the promises God made to his only truly humble and anointed servant. There is no one who pleases the Father greater than the Son, no one who knows the Father's will more clearly. And so it should not surprise us that there is no one who prayed better than Jesus. But we who have been joined to Christ in baptism, who partake of his body, we have become his body on earth, which still offers humble prayers to the Father in the name of Jesus. Thy will be done. There is no more frightening, dangerous, or exciting prayer than that. Let us pray that God will open his merciful ears to us and by the Spirit help us this week to ask such things that will please him, whatever that might mean for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O God, make clean our hearts within us and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same of thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with a the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith and unity of spirit in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we that unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>